Hello everyone and welcome to Sony Games Through the Time. My name is Joachim and today we'll be unboxing a bunch of stuff, but actually the uh, uh, Eternal Palace uh, Kickstarter. But I'm pretty sure I added some other stuff because it says here Paper Dungeons, but honestly I've forgotten because it's been so long. So let's just see what's uh, in this box, shall we? Okay, so this is what the whole package looks like. I'm now going to magically remove all the bubble wrap and then we'll see here what is actually in there. So for those interested, this is how they wrapped it, the corner pieces, the foam and everything. So it was all nice and cozy. Now let's take a look at the actual games. Okay, so this is what was inside. We have uh, Paper Dungeons by uh, Leandro uh, Pires, a dungeon, dungeon scrawler game and then the uh, dice tray for it as well. And then we have Eternal Palace by S Stephen Araminian Art by Quentin Renier. And uh, yeah, you can see it, 14 plus age, one to five players, 60 to 90 minutes, Alley Cat Games, of course also Alley Cat Games, one to eight, 10 plus, 30 minutes. Funny thing that Paper Dungeons is here because I actually thought about buying it not long ago. It just shows what Kickstarters can do. If you don't check them for a long time, you might end up forgetting what you actually added. All right, so I'll put Paper Dungeons on the side for now and focus on Eternal Palace. Okay, so I just removed the plastic. So let's see what's on the sides. I have here, Eternal Palace. Here as well. So it does change a little bit the art, which is always nice. Different flowers. So parts of the palace. And then the back of the box looks like this. So highly interactive dice placement Euro game for one to five players. Players assign workers represented by dice to locations based on their combined value. You visit locations to gain resources, rebuild monuments, and gather painting pieces for your masterpiece. As you can see, it looks pretty nice, uh, but we'll see what it really looks like inside. So. I don't think there'll be art inside of the box, but I could be wrong. I don't think so. No. See, okay. But I'm going to flip the box over like this, so it's easier to take a look at the rule book, which is here at the top. Okay. So, here we go. It's definitely nice, big, and colorful. It really reminds me a little bit of Gugong. <laughs> a little bit, okay, not a lot. Uh, and uh, okay, so my copy actually arrived really late. A lot of people in the world already have it. Uh, apparently, it got stuck in China, especially with the add ons. Uh, took a while to actually get shipped. So, if I pro probably if I hadn't added a paper dungeon, I would have got it a lot earlier. But it is what it is. All right, so it also has expansion modules, which is nice. The labyrinth, the river markets. Compositions, locations, and so on. And of course the solo mode, which is most interesting at the moment. Yeah, seems pretty fleshed out, which is nice, and also takes into account the expansions, which is very cool. All right, so rule, or roll, plan, play, restore. Here's the, for all the phases. Okay, so let's keep going and see what else is in here. And this is a, this is a what is this? <laughs> okay, so these are like kind of screens. All right. It's very beautiful, all of them. And it also says you, it gives basically it's player aid. It tells you how the scoring is, how to place the dice, the round order. Okay. Nice, nice touch. All right, so then we're gonna open this pack here. The punch boards. Okay, so here we have the different sheets. They're also numbered. Um, okay, so I guess these things we'll have to uh, assemble later on. Okay, here there's more stuff to assemble. Okay, you see all the other pieces. There's some fish and everything. Okay, and the pieces for the other players. So only three punch board sheets, so it's not too much. Then we have the board. Let's see if I can open it. I'll put it sideways so it's easier to check. And you can see it is pretty damn beautiful. Part of my language, but it's really, really nice. On the other side, I don't think there'll be anything. No, it's just black. Okay, so I'll slowly 
move it like this as well. You can see very, very colorful. Very, very nice. Okay. And let's continue. There's, there are some more punch boards. I guess these might be for the expansion. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Okay. The Eternal Bridge. Okay. Yeah, these are definitely expansion. River Markets. Okay. The Labyrinth. Looks pretty cool. Then we have all the stuff here and then one tray to actually put it in. Uh, and I like, it has like all the numbers, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and X. So that probably refers to a document or something somewhere that uh, will have the numbers printed on it. Looking at the side of the box here, sometimes it's printed on there, but first glance, uh, no, nothing on there. Okay, let's see what's in here. Let's do the dice first. No, I'm actually not gonna, well, I'll take them out of here. But they don't look that special to be honest. They're just you're know, playing dice uh, in different colors, but nothing too fancy. They actually look cooler in the rule book, <laughs> but yeah, okay. And then we have these the buildings, seems like 3D buildings. Yeah. Bull. Mm -hmm. Bridge. Then I guess this is a pagoda, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, nice. Then we have some resources. We have wood, as you can see. All right. Then we have. Uh, this, but I'm not supposed. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. I'll put it on the screen so you know, <laughs> because I can't change the rule book right now. And then we have this one. Maybe it's a stone or clay or something. I don't know. I guess not stone because I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be stone or bricks. Yeah. And then some clear markers. There we go. One. Remember how I said in the game that you're trying to create your masterpiece? Well, I think all these pieces have something to do with this. So. Let's go through them. They're not double-sided. I mean, they're double-sided, but it's the same, the same uh, prints. So it looks very nice, though. I can see if you combine them, you can get some really nice results. But this is this is very frail. Okay, it's super thin. So you might want to watch out uh, that you don't accidentally bend it or whatever. So it should definitely be put in a safe place or it'll definitely get bad but get damaged because it's super thin some nice towers ah these have numbers 12 10 okay so that's how they go inside the box uh, good to know so at least that way they will be nicely protected Okay, and then some uh, mountains, some backdrops, really nice, oh, everything goes sliding down, just have to be gentle, I don't accidentally bend anything, because there's a second stack, um, and it does look different, so let's go through that as well, so here we go. So 
seen some have doubles. So here there's a lot of doubles. Looks the same. The same. The fives are also the same. Oh, oh. There we go. Yeah, these are always doubles. And there are more mountains and clouds. Well, these clouds don't have any number, so I'm not sure if they're used or not. And one more pack to go. Okay, here we go. These seem to be singles again, not doubles. So I'm gonna have to sort all of these at the end <laughs> to put them back in there. Oh, these are doubles again. And some of them are what we've seen before, actually. And these two are doubles. This one we've seen before, too. Here's back a single one. Yeah, I think we have seen most of these already. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Then we have these stacks that are left. Cards. They're a little bit bent, as you can see, but you know, they can be fixed. So I guess these are Kickstarter exclusives because it has the K on it. Not much to see for art. I guess these are just points if you have certain amounts or whatever. Back of the cards look pretty nice as well. And this deck and the backs look like this. So you can see the game is really, really beautiful. Yeah. Looks nice. I mean, art-wise, it's roughly always the same. Only the, the 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 goods, the resources change, so it's not that special. But in general, it's just it's just beautiful. So, so here we have a bunch of people, and then some resources, and then some special cards near the end. So these are the special cards. All right, so nothing too special about these. Then we have cards with this nice temple on the background. So let's see what they are in the front. I guess you'll be then maybe building this and getting this as a reward. Just guessing here, you know. But art stays the same, so that's important. And then here we have the people. Okay. It seems like uh, several of them come back. The art is just the backdrop that changes, but that's okay, you know. In general, it looks nice enough, for sure. Yeah, so it seems like all the models are coming back now, just in different variations. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. We've already reached the end. This was the uh, unboxing. But um, I'll uh, immediately after this, I'll uh, also put the, the reboxing so we know which what goes where. Okay, so um, I did my best to do a reboxing, but it's gonna come with a lot of caveats, and I'll explain to you why. So let's open the box. Um, looks the same as with the unboxing. First is a manual, and then we have the uh, player board, and then you can see have all these containers now you can use baggies but the problem is it didn't come with any baggies or containers or anything else so i guess you could use the original baggies but i never do so i just took these the cards put in baggies and this in baggies the rest i just put in containers that i bought at japanese home center which is just like a local store here in hong kong so that's how i did it um, some of them may even combined have uh, the fish here and the other stuff together just to get it all in there. So what did I do with the other stuff? That's most important. First of all, let me start with this, which is a painting tray. Now I put the dice in here 
And then you might say, okay, why don't you take the color, like all the yellow and the dice together so everybody has their set. The reason why I put the dice in here is very simple. If you transport the game and you do like this, and you do like this, and this, and like this, or whatever, the uh, paintings underneath, they will not get all messed up and move around and so on. If you don't put the dice in, then there's going to be a gap here and everything will go up and down, up and down, up and down and get shuffled through and become a whole mess. OK, so that's why I put that in there. Of course, aside from that, I just put everything in there according to the numbers. So I'll show you real quick. So, of course, you then have to take the dice out, which, you know, might increase your setup time a little bit. But I think it's worth it, especially if you tend to go to meetups and, and, and transport your game. So on the top, you just have the clear skies, okay, which is the back. So also when you play the game, you're going to be putting these here. So everything that you take out, you'll put up there, except for these ones, uh, because it'll be easier to take out them, okay. So you have the clear skies, then you have the features, right? They, they don't have any numbers. So if you see the pieces without numbers, that means there are features that go on the top at the end, okay? So there's a bunch of them here. And then you just, the numbers, right? You can see you have number one here, number two is here. So one and two, number three is here. So they go like this, one, two, three. I'm not gonna take everything out, just separate everything according to number and then put them back in. For example, three, two, one. Then put the features back on top. And be gentle, like I said, they are very frail and thin. So make sure to tell people when they play with your game. And then just put this on top. And you can see there's a gap. So if you're going to be flipping it around, it's going to go up and down. And I'm afraid for the damage. So I wanted to put something in there that has more pressure so stuff underneath doesn't move around in that case the dice work perfectly because they're roughly the same surface there we go now no problem with the underlying stuff okay so that's one part and then the rest of the of the reboxing basically is not that special just put everything in bags and put it there just just put it in there like you have the cards here not sleeved yet even sleeved they'll be a little bit higher and then i just put all stuff together you know nothing really nothing special aside from that um of course these uh, are not assembled because when you assemble them you can't put them back in the box and make sure that the pieces the flat pieces are at the bottom for example the screens i put all the way at the bottom because they are also frail they're all the way at the bottom then they are better protected and they won't get damaged as quickly. Now this is the expansion board and that's pretty big. So I put that at the bottom as well. And that's basically it. These I put a little bit next to each other like this because the paint tray has gaps at the bottom. You can see here, right? So if you move it a little bit to the, to the side, then it will cover that and then uh, that fits nicely as well. And then basically I just put everything back and, uh, and that's it, right? Um, of course, there's a lot, of, a lot of other options you can do, ways to put everything in there. But I think for me personally, this works best, especially because I had these lying around. But if you don't, you can keep the original baggies. But uh, yeah, all the, that's all up to you, of course. Or you can also put the board all the way at the bottom. But uh, in this case, I like it on the top. And that's it. There's no lift whatsoever. So and there's also not a big gap between the lid either. So I'm pretty happy with this, uh, yeah. So that's the unboxing of Eternal Palace. The unboxing of Paper, Paper Dungeons will be a separate video, okay? So that's it. This was so many games for all the time. My name was Joachim, and uh, always will be. Have an amazing day, and uh, hopefully I'll see you uh, when I do the playthrough and how I feel about it, okay? Bye-bye.